<laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know. People say they couldn't hear. That's weird that they couldn't hear, but I don't know. So, yeah. Thank you so much for being here, sir. I'm so grateful. You know, it's so difficult to say no to you. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, you have to tell the people you put a gun to my head. <laughs> to yeah, that is difficult. It's not like for you. <laughs> as a matter of fact, this is my first live video ever, actually. I know. So, me, mine as well. And it's yeah, great that, yeah. you know, I'm actually doing it with yeah. you. So I'm really grateful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, Pleasure. Yeah, so hi, hi everyone. Welcome to my first Instagram live session. Joining me today is Steve Babaiko, the CEO of Extreme Ideas, Extreme Music, Zero Degrees, and Seven Interactive. Today we're going to be talking about branding and providing value and navigating social media as whether you're a small business, you're a huge business, you're a brand, you're an influencer, you're a musician, you're a celebrity, everybody joined together. How do you navigate social media? <laughs> And I think that this is a very important conversation to have because we see that nowadays all it takes is one ad to or one tweet and you can damage your reputation. And I should also add that Mr. Baiko has to be out of here by 1 p.m. or earlier than that because he has another earlier. meeting. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do my best to get through the conversations as quickly as possible. And if you have any questions for him, please use the question mark box and type your questions and I'll definitely get to them once we're done. So, Mr. Baiko, let's jump right in. This All is right. a really trying okay. Great. So this is a really trying time for billions of people around the world and also millions of people in Nigeria. People have lost their jobs, they're dying. And to add to make matters worse, brands and companies have had to tweak their, you know, traditional strategy marketing campaigns. But just because you're doing that does not mean that your branding is going to be on pause, right? Absolutely. So yeah, so how would you rate um, Nigerian brands, how would you rate their response to this new normal that we all find ourselves? Well, I think in fairness, I mean, first of all, before I even say anything, shout out to all the health workers across the world doing so much uh, to just save people. And uh, again, shout out to all the citizens of the world going through this very difficult time. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is just to keep the hope alive and keep faith that we'll survive this yeah. one. Uh, having said that, I think you see across the world, you see a lot of people, a lot of brands are trying to make the best of a very terrible situation. I mean, I always, I, I say to my friends, this is a generation that has not seen, that has not witnessed what war feels like. Wow. This generation of people who are like 50 below, especially in Nigeria, we don't, we've heard about the Biafran war, the civil war, but this is like one millions of what's the horrors of war that's what we're witnessing in the world today so when people go out there and want to say oh we want war and i think people should be more careful you know we think this is discomforting for us right now if it's in a worse situation it's actually worse from everything that we've read in the book so but you see that brands have jumped on this trying to make the best of a, uh, of a terrible situation like i said uh, amazon now they've added a value add for their clients if you if you if you are like an elite uh, card holder for Amazon, they can deliver groceries to you free of charge. You see, so it it makes sense to be able to like what value are you going to add in Nigeria? A couple of brands have done stuff that I find very interesting, and I can only speak of the brands that I'm familiar with. If you look at DSTV, for instance, Lagos State Government says just to be able to flatten the curve, stay at home, don't go to church. What did DSTV do? They started the Hallelujah channel on channel 198 so that people can tap in and still be able to feed themselves spiritually. Uh, Pick Milk understood that uh, the distribution channel of maybe uh, uh, open market and all these other channels of distribution have been hampered because everybody is stuck at home. What did they do? They partnered with Disky.com to say you can you can buy and get delivered of, of, of your Pick Milk brand. Uh, Lou knows that people are stuck at home what did they do? They said, look, on a Sunday, if you can, you can get up to 20% on every data you purchase. So you can see different brands from different, just trying to just use the opportunity of the very terrible situation we're in to either make life a little bit more comfortable for the consumers or just be able to give some kind of value add. Yeah, that's true. Now, yeah. a follow-up question to that is, 
like you rightly said, these are businesses and they need to make money and still reach out to their customers and Absolutely. consumers in general. And you still want to stay relevant. Like you said, you can, your branding cannot be on pause. Now, I saw that, and one of the quickest ways to do that is through social media. And I saw that you tweeted last week that Nigerian brands <laughs> should be careful of jumping on any social media challenge because of copyright yeah. infringement issues. Can you speak about that? Well, to be honest, you see, again, sometimes, you know, we do so many things out of ignorance in this country. But, you know, the funny thing is that before the law, ignorance is not an excuse, right? I mean, uh, there was the Don't Rush Challenge. I mean, the, those artists are not even Nigerian. So you can even say before the long arm of the law catches up with you from America, wherever the eye is going to take it. But, but of course, fans also did the Bob Daddy Challenge. I'm not going to mention any name, but I've seen a few brands jump on it. If I was in Francis management, and thank God he's a lawyer, I'll be going to court. You see, because you can't, as a brand, you can't just jump. There's the copyright law and intellectual property law does not allow you unless you get clearance. Of course, if you, this is a time when everybody needs all the kind of visibility and the eyeballs that they, that they report, that they are fine. So if you think Francis uh, Bob Daddy is is happening on the online, please reach out to his management, get all the papers signed, they give you the license to be able to use this in any way in any way you, they, they, that's agreeable with them. And then you do your thing, but you can't just say, oh, because everybody is doing Bob Daddy Challenge, you bring your brand, brand and start showing it in the mix. You're just yeah. going to get yourself into trouble. And I, I see clearly a few litigations are going to come out of this period. Yeah. Oh, we'll be looking, as we always say. Now, yeah. let's, go, <laughs> let's go into the music industry and creative industry a bit. Um, a lot of us are stuck at home, especially if you're not a, if you're not a health worker or an essential worker. And yeah. this seems to be like the right time for people to release music or release projects, right? Now, this is a three-part question. The first part is, the first question is, do you think that this is the right time for artists to, or creatives to release music projects? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, as you know, streaming numbers are down. <laughs> people, you would yeah. think that because we're all at home, people listen to music, but because of, I think, the coronavirus is like a very novel virus, and it's really affecting the economy and people in general. For whatever reason, people are not necessarily like listening to music. So can you speak about that? But, no, frankly, uh, what the, the name of this uh, British writer, writing it, uh, I think it's Charles Dickens, he wrote about the Tales of Two City. He said, these are the best of time and this are the worst of time. To answer that question directly, I said the same reason you can use to justify why this is a wrong time to release music are the same set of reasons you can use to justify why this is the right time to release music. Now, let's look at the pro and the con. In favor of releasing music at this, at this time, I only look at the guys who have done it successfully. Uh, Drake released uh, Two City Slide. Mm -hmm. And before you could say Jack Robinson, before he even dropped that music, the music was already a hit. I mean, yeah. he took over, you know, he took over <laughs> social media, and between him and the dancer Tusi, that the, the song was named <laughs> after, they had, they had, they had finished everything, and TikTok maybe up to about ten million posts about this song on TikTok yeah. today. It is, it is huge. It is massive, over 20 something million views on YouTube for that video. And it's when did he, when did he drop it? So people are bored. You have captive audience waiting to just see and jump on whatever it is you're doing, if it is good and if it is marketed well. But I say, let's look at the call. If you, why it is not the wrong time. There's so much going on. I've never seen, I mean, I've been on Instagram now for a minute. I've never seen so much. Everybody is now an anchor. Everybody is hosting one live program, which is why Ashley <laughs> have been reluctant. So, so everybody is a TV host now. Everybody is a TV anchor wanting to host everything. So there's so much information. Before this period, you go out, you go to work, you are literally distracted. But now you are a captive, you are a prisoner of conscience for social media. So, so much information being hitting at you. So if the music is not extraordinarily good and the marketing uh, plan is not like really novel and different and cutting edge, the chances are it, it's going to get lost in the crowd. So yeah. that's why yeah. I say it's, it's the yeah. good time and it's also a bad time. Yeah. Now, if you look at Nigeria, Nigerian musicians, from a strategy standpoint, because we're all stuck at home, 
do they have to be intentional about the types of music or the genre of music that they're going to release? Because the prevailing narrative is that we like to party, but there's no club to go to. There's no party to go to. <laughs> How can we go about doing that? Well, honestly, again, I'm, I'm still, because of my own journey in music has always just been for love. I, I, I think I'm the wrong person to talk to about business when it comes mm -hmm. to music. Because I've always just been passionate about music. And I just say that, look, what am I just going to do? I love this. I love music. It's a hobby for me. But can I, in the same process, support some people who have really, really good talent and who can contribute and become something? And we've done that as much as we could. But you see, I'm, to that extent, I'm much more passionate about the art of music. Uh, in, the, in the creative process, I'm, th th that's my core area. And so I'm not going to say, and that's why there's no talent we've ever signed where we told the talent, oh, this is what you must sing. No. Uh -huh. I just believe that there's something from the inside. Why did we even reach out to sign you in the first place? There must be some latent talent we felt that you had and some direction we were already going that we saw that we felt, okay, we could support. So I'm still... You know, as much as we want the commercial side, personally speaking, I'm sure I'm not speaking for extreme music as a label. Personally <laughs> speaking, I want artists to sing from their heart, from their guts. Mm -hmm. You see, and, it, and sometimes when you sing from your guts, no matter what season it is, it's still going to be, be, yeah. be it's still going to connect. Because at the end of the day, it's about you being able to connect with millions of consumers out there who either love or hate your work. And I'll give you a, a, a small example. Yemi Aladdin Shekere, over 6.5 million views on YouTube today. The way that woman has been pushing this song, even That's before right. the lockdown, just slightly before the lockdown, mm -hmm. she and Angelique Kidjo, they've That's been pushing amazing. this song down our throats. You see, the, the energy, the passion they put in just driving this song home, you have to respect that. You can see, it's, it's, showed, it's showing on the numbers. So yeah. whatever the topic of the song, it really doesn't matter because... People are feeling it and they are, they are responding positively to it. Yeah, okay. Now, let, let's step away from the music industry. When you look at Nigerian celebrities and musicians, they are trying their best in whatever way, shape, or form to reach out to their fans and voice their opinions or whether it's social distancing or do you need money or whatever the case may be. Now, what would you... Are they doing it well or are they not doing it well? Because an innocent celebrity who really has good intentions may have their tweets or comments misconstrued and come across as being elitist or you're out of touch. Can you speak about that? I think the government should be grateful to Nigerian celebrities or, or celebrities anywhere in the world who are just coming to support because people need information. I mean, there are certain parts of the country where they told you, they were actually demonstrating that. See? Corona is not real. And so the more celebrities who come out to really try and educate the people, the better. But having said that, this is the time to be very sensitive and careful. People are hungry. We all know how the, the Nigerian economy is. There's a lot of people at that uh, below the pyramid section that all they need to do every day, they go out and a daily living, that's how they feed themselves and their families. Now, some of them are even above that section who are also have the opportunity to be on social media. If you come out as a celebrity and you're not sensitive and taking into cognizance the hunger that people are going through and the pang of just the uncertainty that's just in the atmosphere today, and you go and see anyhow, they see on the streets of Lagos, if you talk anyhow, you will see anyhow. See, they, they, and they're just saying that they will drive you like a, a, pass, a better pass by anybody in the And you see, quite a whole of, a couple of celebrities have been dragged. This is the time where you have to say stuff and be much more conscious about what the people are going through. So, I mean, but first we must thank and appreciate the celebrities for shedding more light on the virus and just educating our people because they have the credibility, they have the influence to be able to at least talk to their fans and supporters. Yeah. Now, as a branding expert, the flip argument could be, what about celebrities that don't speak out and then their fans think that they don't care? Maybe because they are respecting the fact that, you know, maybe it's an expert that should be speaking about that and not me. What would you tell that celebrity? Well, I think we're at war. And we're at war. We're at war. Everybody, all hands are required, you know. 
So, I mean, except if you want to be a drug dodger, this is a war that we all must part participate in in any little way that we can. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is the time to go out there and educate people. Again, this is not the time to now start dragging the celebrities who are not speaking up. I mean, again, freedom of speech is guaranteed under the constitution of this country. So you can either speak or you, you, you don't speak. But one thing that I know is that the consumers out there they have the memory of elephants. Elephants never forget. People yeah. are going to remember. I say, somebody said, when all is said and done, we shall not remember the the, the the what our enemy said. I'm just paraphrasing that, but we'll remember the silence of our friends. So yeah. if you are there, you feel you have followers, and you're not speaking out and reaching out to them and try and make some kind of move that will make their life slightly even better, even if it's psychologically. Just trust me, I'm sure people will remember when the time comes. So yes. there's a day of reckoning. So I will still suggest, go out there, do the best you can. Just put a smile on, even if it's one person's face. These are difficult times for everybody. Yeah. Now, you kind of jump ahead to one of my questions. is the fact that, like you said, people are keeping track of who's helping during this crisis, sure. whether you're sure. a brand or a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And there's actually an interesting article on the Business of Fashion website that talked about this same issue. And if I don't, I don't know if you read The Guardian on Sunday. Some um, mm -hmm. brands communication expert said this as well. And she... Um, mm -hmm. Her name is Ayo Dotson Rotimi Akinfema. And okay. she said that... I know Yeah. Yeah. She said this Dutton, is, yeah. Okay, she said this period has been a tough one for everyone around the world and the brands that will be remembered after this will be the ones who went out of their way to be considerable, responsive to what our customers need, to stakeholders and humanity in general. Absolutely. Now, you, just talk, you just touched on the fact that Nigerians, will, people will remember the celebrities and the brands that were very helpful towards this global pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but some Nigerian celebrities have been accused of insulting their fans and being rude. <laughs> Now, <laughs> you could make the argument that because it's Ninja, all they have to do is do one giveaway, right? And uh, yeah. apologize that people <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> what would you tell them in terms of being careful this time? It, again, it's, it's a tough country. I'm telling you, people say, oh, politicians get away with murder, they do whatever, and then they, they spread money around during the election time and they still get the vote. It's the same thing, but... You see, we're moving towards what now. Okay, let's even take the situation we're in now. I don't want us to forget the hot and the place, the difficult position that even the so-called celebrities are in today. Uh, There's a Yoruba proverb. They said, your calabash is missing. You say you put a mark on the calabash. Is it not where you find the calabash that you see the mark that's on it? There's a pandemic. You're talking about celebrities. People can't do gigs between now and probably the end of the year. So celebrities have lost endorsements, they have lost money. And don't forget that almost 70, maybe more percentage of their income come from all of these gigs and all of these shows. Mm -hmm. So if, if, even the celebrities themselves are hurting. So that's mm -hmm. the point I've, I first I almost wanted to put out. So <laughs> when a celebrity comes out and says something that may be slightly out of tone, you don't even know the state of mind. Maybe he's calculating all, all of the money he has lost and he's not feeling so good at, the, at that moment. Yeah. I think this is just the time for us to be just be more understanding and put ourselves in each other's shoes, okay? Uh -huh. And just do the best thing that, that we can. But I would just say, look, as a celebrity, you're going out to say something. Just weigh your words carefully. I mean, as my rule for social media is I always talk about the things I like. You will never see me. talk about oh go out to criticize I, I work i run an ad agency then i come out and i start and i start pointing fingers at the campaign that another ad agency has put out and i'm saying oh that ad is work you'll never see me do that i run yeah. a music label you never see me go out to criticize another artist and say oh their music is work no matter how work an artist is he has he or she has supporters the moment you come out and you like a Google, you go to the express and starts to criticize another <laughs> artist, you get the supporters come out to jump on you and drag you like that generator I was talking about earlier. So yeah. I think this is just it's a very difficult time. We all must be sensitive and just be much more uh you know, responsible in, in all of the things we say and all our yeah. our trances. Yeah. Sure. Now there Lots of influencers that have 
contracts with brands and right now it's like we've all just we all know it's very challenging for you to meet your contractual obligations and I want What would you advise influencers in terms of how they can go about meeting those contractual obligations? Not from not from the legal perspective, from an advertising sure. perspective. And two, yeah. what have you seen in terms? Of mistakes or maybe even affordable steps that certain influencers are taking. I'll tell influencers these are the best of times and these are also the worst of times. Okay, I'll let me start from the best of times. It's the best of times because, like I said in some session I had, uh, with some, it's a closed session uh, that I had about last week. It's the best of time because you see brands that have invested hundreds of millions on out of home communication, i.e., outdoor and whatever. In these four weeks, that investment is useless. People have to sure. first go out to see out of home communication so it means the clients and and every client that i know are looking for more eyeballs to see what they are doing so what do they do now television that was relegated about a couple of years ago that was not popping all of a sudden television is like a superhero today mm -hmm. uh the 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 morning belt of tv that used to be like totally dead who watches tv in the morning everybody's out hustling now is the superstar so you see Again, the lesson from this is that God has not forgotten anybody. You might be not be popping last week, but <laughs> Corona <laughs> comes and you might be the superstar today. So that's what's going on. Now, yeah. clients are looking for influencers who are sitting on top of 5 million, 4 million fan base, eyeballs, just ready to see what they do, okay? Because of just a simple reason, these are the best of time for influencers. But also is the worst of time because now clients will now start to, to look. If I were brands, what I'm looking for are brand fits between the value of the influencer and my brand. Now, if if I have a family brand that's for the family, I'm not going to give an influencer that's smoking marijuana on their on their live videos. I'm just not going to do that. Okay, so all of the things that you have done can now rob you of business opportunities. Okay, so but if if I was a brand that is for everybody, that maybe I want to, I'll still be careful what I put out there as an influence. This is the time to even be more, more and more careful. I, I, the guys that I've said has done a lot that has really really. Uh, I think has hijacked this period will be Don Jazzy. Mm. What he's doing on TikTok is amazing. He's hilarious. I mean, if I was a brand, that's the guy I would be talking to because I think he's just he gets it. He really, really between him and his team, they get it. They understand. There must be entertainment value. There must be eyeballs that are related to your page, willing to see. So if I have something to say, I'll be talking to somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder, but have you seen any mistakes that people have made? I mean, not no, mentioning anybody. Yeah, I, I just think it's just not getting it and still being thinking it's business as usual and mm -hmm. putting all of the things that we're not even supposed to talk about. I really don't want to be specific so that yeah, I'm not, not now put it and say I, he was referring to such and such as which yeah. is not really my style anyway. I think yeah. one should just be caught. If you're not sure how it's going to play and play up in support of your brand or the brand you're supposed to be influencing for, if you are not sure how it's going to play out, don't put it out. Sure. Because sure. see, this is the time where it's not just you're not doing it for fun now. A, a lot of money is at stake, and uh, you'll be robbing yourself of the income that should be accruable to you because of just one silly mistake of what you put up that is mm -hmm. inappropriate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let me go into some questions. Um, someone is asking. Let me see. Something about extreme. I don't know. If, I think it's something about how is how is how are you managing this stay at home in terms of how's extreme managing this stay at home and being able to still do great work. Well, it, it's amazing because I mean I think we we were we were lucky, but also we were very future forward. We we, we were ahead of the curve. I was mm -hmm. I, I granted an interview. We we hired a nurse about four years ago, and people always ask me when I tell people oh, we have an in-house nurse. We we, we we set up 
a sick bay facility within our office complex. And then we hired this nurse from one of the top uh, hospitals in Lagos. And she works there all through the week with us. She started coming twice a week in the beginning. And then she said, look, I, I actually love this environment. I'll quit my job. I want to work here full time. I would say, great. So what, her role is just health advisory. Full of little things like blood pressure, blood sugar level, you know, follow up on our people. If they have complaints, they go there. She directs us to uh, the appropriate hospital we should go and all of that. A part of her duty also, she compiles reports. If there's anything that has to do with health globally, she compiles this report and she sends it out. Part of the report she had sent, maybe since January, included stuff about COVID-19. Wow. Based on that, we had sat with HR, we did a plan. What if this thing hits us and we can no longer work in our office? What is our off-site work plan? So we had a documented off-site work plan. Before the Lagos State Government announced that we should even go close down, of course, we value our people. Our people yeah. are so important to us. We had shut down before Lagos even announced. And because we had it, we knew the people who needed to take their desktop home. We had made sure that all of the insurance and all of those desktop were in, in place. We knew people who would have power challenge in their houses because they need money for generator. We had given those allowances. We work with Glow, so of course data wasn't a problem. You can see how clear my my communication with you <laughs> powered by Glow. Really, so bad. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so we, were, we were ready. We were ready. So sometimes it's just about being able to think ahead, and that's why I tell I tell all of my friends who also run companies. I tell them if you run a business, just always ask yourself this question: If my business was a state in Nigeria. What state would it be? Would it be Lagos State or will, or will it be some states that I'd rather not mention? In Lagos State, no matter how bad as it bad, you can still see government in action. Government trying to do something, okay? Mm -hmm. On a bad day, okay? Yeah. And some states, nothing is happening. Those states are dead. So you have to choose what you want to be and then the kind of, what you, whatever it is that you want to be, those are the kind of team you, you surround yourself with. So uh, we're doing well. In fact, I think we're working even harder now than we when we were even in the office. So because it's seamless. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Now I think it's important that we distinguish between um, advertising and branding. Those are two sure. different things, right? Mm -hmm. So can you mm -hmm. break that down for people who may be wondering? Like I thought branding is the same as advertising. Well, just to be honest, sometimes it's, I think it's seasonal when people just come and start to say they throw some buzzword, they throw some buzzword around and just to and and hair splitting and stratification. But I mean, branding is all of the iconography that goes into making a product take that long transition from just being a product to a brand. Okay? And I'll give you an example. Branding are all of those marquee signs that you see. You see that Mercedes-Benz star. Even if they don't write, they didn't write Mercedes-Benz there. You already know what it is, right? Uh, there was... Uh, <laughs> a single that uh, Olamide dropped that was controversial back in the days, and uh, where he used, just used uh, a female brief on on the circle to create that Mercedes star logo, mm -hmm. and people still it was still recognizable. Recognizable. That's the power of branding for you because, and if you see the Nike tick, if you just see the tick, I'm sure a whole lot of things are coming to your head about just do it and whatever. Advertising also. It's a much more broader term, which includes taking all of the skills and all of the uh, all of the tools for branding and deploying it in favor of a brand. So, but it's, for me, I think they are they are they are exchangeable. Uh, you will, the new guy, the new guys who want to really say, "Oh, we are we are more new age," we say, "I'm into branding." You understand what I mean? I, I've always think that look, I'm an advertising professional. And uh, you just deploy some branding techniques to, to make a difference. Okay. Yeah. Now, some person, Yamuzi, says that how can we convince brands in essential services to embrace digital? A lot of them are still behind and are reluctant to embrace digital strategies to make the services still accessible. A lot of people are still skeptical about digital, you know, the, sometimes you feel like your your identity will be compromised you feel like oh you could be hacked 
So a lot of people, when ATM started in Nigeria, do you know how long it took for some people to get their first ATM card? People were people were just skeptical. So, and, and as professionals, we have to keep pushing and pushing, convince people uh, why it's is the way to go. I mean, our East Extreme Ideas Easter campaign, where we just used our, our people for the campaign, was was viral. So, if you if you want to say if you want to compute the on end. Uh, exposure, we, we, we unpaid exposure that we, we got from just that one ad. It's You can't put money to it. You know what I mean? So for small brand, it is the way to go. But as professionals, we just have to be more creative uh, and more persuasive when we try to convince them. Now, someone says, how should how Lord Babajide says, how should IMC industry adjust to the realities of COVID-19 now and post-era? Well, well, I suspect, uh, yeah, integrated marketing communication. Oh, I suspect, okay. <laughs> I suspect Lord Babajide is, a, is, a, is working on that in the industry. So shout out Lord Babajide. Uh, we have to adjust. It's not business as usual. The thing is that we are in that bottom of that food chain. The clients are slightly upper. Once, whatever is happening on the, in the macro economy, once it starts to hit the clients, the advertising people will start to feel the pain because it's like it is. Once the the, the client sneezes, ad agencies catch cold, right? You know, no pun intended. I mean, but the thing is, you must adjust. This is the time. I tell every of my professional colleagues, this is not the time to fold your hands and wait for this COVID nineteen to be over. This is the time to go and think. Start bombarding all of your clients with massive cutting-edge ideas. You see? I saw, so I saw someone if, say that online, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you don't do that, you are out. And let me tell you, the clients are actually watching. Who is giving me new ideas? Is anybody suggesting anything new right now? If you're not suggesting anything new, why are we keeping you? So, and let's not forget that because things are so bad right now, some agencies were already on the ropes before this COVID hit. Unfortunately for the industry, with this COVID thing, some agencies, I'm afraid, might not actually open their doors, even when the government said we can all go out. So jobs will be lost, and my heart breaks for that, but... This is the time to be more creative. It's not going to be business as usual. We have to start thinking, not just out of the box, but out of everywhere. You know, just to yeah. keep getting new ideas yeah. and, and make yeah. the clients, uh, you know. Okay. So, Essay of Life says, this is actually a very interesting question. My question is, how does a luxury brand stay relevant at these times? Luxury brand. Well, well shout, shout out to Essay. <laughs> the thing is that for... Luxury brand is always Nigeria has always been a very interesting market. Okay, so for the really super luxury brands, there's the one of the one percent that the one percent of the one percent that they target anyway in this country. Those guys are in Banana Island with their chauffeur and their Bentleys, and the, they 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 know that there's COVID nineteen. They hear of it because they watch it on TV, but it doesn't move people. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the guys donating one billion and five billion to the government. Now they can't. They, these guys are super cool. The only thing that's disturbing them is that the government has shut the airspace, so they can't fly with their private jet and go out. So I mean, for those guys, luxury brands will they will see, they can afford anything they want. What's ca- if I can tell you, there are people in this country push calls to show. They say there's a new car that just come out now and they want it. They are going to call and some of these airlines who still have licenses to fly cargo and bring yeah. those cars in even in this short so i mean yeah <laughs> so not very brand what is not talking to people like us who are just still hustling and trying to make <laughs> <laughs> they are fine <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah i think yeah i think well, i think that's a very interesting question because yeah you yeah but that's true because you, you you're not the target market so waiting mm-hmm. on time you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay Someone said, Okoyemi the first says, where, um, Baba Steve, where do good ideas come from, I guess? Well, I mean, good ideas come from our subconscious. They come, they are, they are inspired by some of the things we see around us. And sometimes when people ask me, uh, uh, what, what's your source of inspiration? 
I always tell them, it's a it's very simple question. I have a beautiful wife and three sons to feed. If I don't get inspired and do good work, then <laughs> we'll all starve to death. So <laughs> that's my own inspiration. So, but I mean, good ideas are everywhere. I think I saw uh, Funke Medina. Uh-huh. Akunki, shout out to you, you know, yeah. So, I mean, good ideas are everywhere. The thing is just always just surround yourself with the best team. Uh, uh-huh. Because good idea is not a function of one person, it's a function of the collective. And you are as strong as your team, so you have to just keep uh, investing on the right people, you know. Yeah. Now, for a small advertising agency, this is one of my questions. For a small advertising agency that, like you said, COVID-19 is really damaging the economy. Sure. What would you say, I mean, I, don't, you, you, I, don't, I know that this is, your, this is not your business, but yeah. what, what steps would you tell them to take in terms of trying to get their, get their work out there? Because now it's really challenging, right? But yeah. when this all hopefully subsides and maybe there's some... Um, what's it called, vaccine that is found, how do, yeah. how do a small ad agency start building up again? Well, the thing, there are three things, that I call them the three big C's that affect business, that affect business, that are affecting businesses generally today. Three big C's. Number one C is cash flow. Your cash flow. And your cash flow is like the blood. Once the blood draws, runs dry, you're dead, okay? Number two, big C, is, is your costs. How do you manage your costs? So you have to manage your costs. Right now, our finance director, I give him a mandate. Every cost, including any cost that is driven by the CEO of, or CEO's of has to come down first by 25% before we even start to see anything else. Okay? And then the third big C is credit. Government has been making so much noise. Oh, we have some money that we're giving out to try and bail out our rescue uh, businesses. Try and look for it. I know some, sometimes people have accused government that some of those money are audio money. We can't see it. But look for credit any way you can to just tide yourself over this very difficult period. You know. And then there's one thing that you mentioned which I find very interesting. Even if there is no uh, client to give you any brief that is challenging as, 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 and interesting, give yourself the brief. Do stuff for yourself and showcase yourself because don't forget that the marketing directors, the chief marketing officers, the, the CEOs of all of these companies that we all aspire to work for, they are at home. They are prisoners of conscience like you and I, just waiting, looking for where good information is, where who is doing what. There was when we did the Easter campaign, the, the MD of a company, I'm not going to mention his name. Sent it to me via WhatsApp to say, Steve, this is a good one. So everybody's watching. So don't fold your hands and say, oh, we didn't get a good brief. Give yourself a brief and, and, and give yourself a facing share so that when this is all over, they will say, oh, yeah, I saw that thing. Or maybe if somebody says, okay, we're calling for a pitch, we're calling such and such company. They, oh, we, I know of that because I saw some of the things they did. You know, uh-huh. so that's the way to go. And what about influencers? People are going to be cutting their resources, right? It's, and it's like, yeah, it's <laughs> so everybody, it, this is a time for sacrifice. Everybody has to like pitch in and make sacrifices. Clients don't have the kind of money they they they, they used to have because of this this short period where their distribution has been interrupted and been disrupted, and because their distribution has been disrupted, their sales has been affected, and because their sales have been affected. They are watching one of the big C's and saying, look, we are cutting costs. And if the cost gets to you, you have to just find a way. Because, I mean, we will get past this one. And sometimes the clients are looking for uh, partners who can help them through this period as well. Mm -hmm. So this is not the time to complain too much. It's the time we know. Like I said, we're at war. And when we're at war, all hands have have to be on deck. So everybody has to... They have to adjust and make some kind of sacrifice going forward. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't see any more questions that people have there. But do you have any final words for the... Because um, I'm sure that there's some marketing agencies that are here. And I think you better touch on the fact that times have changed and people are cutting their budgets. The goal is to remain creative and know how to work with you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, the, the very big agencies will survive. I mean, no matter how difficult it is, they will survive. They will through 
the next level will also manage to eke out a living. And the guys that are my heart actually goes out to are the young guys just starting up. And honestly, in my heart, we need we need more agencies, not just in terms of number, but in terms of sophistication of thinking. I think it. So for those guys, it's going to be difficult right now. I, I, my my advice to you: don't give up. Just don't roll over and die because of this period. Some of the best ideas, some of the most successful companies in the world, sometimes came out of an adversity, like a period like this. So just hang in there, hang on to that dream, see whatever you see you can do, uh, based on some of the uh, the points that I have raised here today, and see how to move yourself. This one, this period too shall pass. And uh, keep the dream alive. Entrepreneurs, they, they said uh, a country does not make a sale, all right? So, I mean, for entrepreneurs, it's not when things are going well that we know who the real entrepreneurs are. It's actually in challenging times like this. That's when we know who the real entrepreneurs are. Uh, so hang in there. And for the young guys out there, if there's any young person watching me or if you ever get to see this, Please, all of these whole ideas of wanting to go and and uh, and attack innocent people, I think we need to we need to we need to stop it. I mean, everybody is hungry, everybody is feeling the pain. We cannot make any difference by going to attack innocent people and, and stopping disturbing their sleep. I mean, uh, but if we are just a little patient and we we rally around each other, uh, we will survive this. And for corporate. Uh, citizens like organizations and company please whatever it is you can do uh just go out there provide food provide anything i mean you see the guys who were capable donated money in the billions that's within their category within our own category provide food provide anything sanitizers essentials go to the neighborhood where your business is located do something put a smile on somebody's face today and god will bless you as you do and just a quick question before you go. You talked about the small businesses, yeah. about entrepreneurs being, you know, steadfast and fighting that good fight. It's yeah. going to be hard, like, you, right? like we all know. Even yeah. for me, I did, I did, I did a bad job. But um, what about your approach to someone wants to buy your company, but you're saying here, fight the good fight? What, what, how would you go about that? Would you have? To, how would you rationalize that? If somebody brings like maybe hundred million dollars for me to sell my company now, <laughs> no, not your company. I mean, like this small person that you just started out, right? We, we, <laughs> too, we, are, we are small, way too. We are just like... <laughs> no, so, <laughs> trust me, hundred million dollars. I'll be calling my lawyers and my financial advisors. Let them do this. Find this deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, those opportunities will come. And again, for for your entrepreneurs i mean the thing is, i find around here is that we, we we are too emotional about the business we hold it they say you tie this wall to your chest like they say on the street of Lagos. we tie the business to our chest oh it's my business i started it at believe me entrepreneurship means you have to know when to pivot you have to know when to let go you see there's this saying in Yoruba, I don't know how else to say it, and apologies to the non Yoruba speakers here. Imoja, Imosa, Afimaki Koju. Knowing when to attack and when to retreat is how we know a true warrior. Mm -hmm. So there are times in your business life where you know you have to retreat. And if that retreat means selling this business, cashing out, and jumping straight right into it for the next, for the rebound and go for something else, well, that's what you must do. Okay. Yeah. So don't tighten it to your chest. Some people tighten it to their chest to the point that the business becomes valueless. And every business has the same curve. It's like this. It starts it starts to go up, it peaks and it starts to crash. So you want to tighten this business to your chest to the point where it crashes and becomes valueless. It's it's your call. But my call is if you have the chance to cash out and sell out at this point take the money and go. Cash is king right now in this economy, yeah. in this COVID-19 economy, cash is king. Yeah.
Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time, Mr. Bye Bye Kwan. Thank you so much thank to you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Pray that we all continue to stay safe and definitely thoughts and prayers to everyone who's like really sick from this virus and people who have even died and definitely much yeah. respect to all our health workers in Nigeria and all our essential workers that are doing their absolute yeah. best by the challenges. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yeah, I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Peace. We're out of here. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.